I guess for, for me, for me, I, I mean, I really associate that playing with Jimi Hendrix, but, um, and that's, that's where I learned it from. Um, when I was a little kid and I heard Little Wing, I remember, I remember going, to, going to some like Indian, in Florida at the summer, I went to some Indian get together picnic. They had like an Indian band, it was on an Indian reservation and the band there played Little Wing and, and I remember, 
I thought about it a lot and I decided that nobody could possibly know how to play Little Wing. Like I, I felt like I felt like that it's it's in the you know category of impossible to play, you know, like like and and I saw this guy play it and I just couldn't believe my eyes. Like this this guitar player up there was was playing it and I, I felt I really felt like he was doing the impossible. So that, that kind of playing it took me a while because it, it exists on so many levels. You've got the you've got the chord being played and then and then and then you've got a, a, a sort of a lead part going on on top of it and then you also get on top of the lead part these extra strings that are being barred that are on the high strings and it ends up sounding to the ear of somebody who doesn't know how to play guitar it sound or somebody who's at a beginning stage is it it really sounds like it's like three guitars at once and that, that was why little wing really had me confused because I thought how could that be one guitar it sounds like three guitars you know but I guess that where Jimmy was getting that style from was Curtis Mayfield. It was the, from what I understand, the originator of that style of, of rhythm guitar playing. And so, you know, his, his work in the impressions and all his great solo records and everything, it was real innovative stuff. And I know it was a big influence on, on Jimi Hendrix's playing. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think using my thumb definitely has a lot to do with the way it sounds when I do it. Um, because it gives my fingers a lot more freedom. For me, like, I could never play this chord that way. It just, it would be too limiting for me. I, there's only so much you can do from there. And, and when your thumb's taking care of that, you have a lot of freedom here. And like, like so, so that, for me, that's a big part of playing in that style. Like, especially on, on Danny California, where it's, where I'm, that thumb is reaching those, those notes, you know, like, you know, it's, it's like, it just couldn't be done if you tried to do it this way, you know? And so, um, so that's a big part of it. But as far as as far as hitting it, I guess um, I guess it just comes from years of doing it. It's not something that I've ever really thought about that much. I know I know the the ability to to uh, to to block the strings that you don't want to be using with this hand, rather than not picking them. I tend to pick all the strings, and and uh, if I don't want a certain note to ring through, I'll lift my finger up on it without lifting up all the way. And that's just something that, it's second nature to me now, but I guess to somebody who's, who's starting, who's in their first couple of years of playing, it's really a good thing to start thinking about is, is, uh, is getting in the habit of, of, of picking all the strings. That way you can get really the, the, the real rhythmic kind of attack. And, um, and, then, and then with this hand, if you, if, you, if you wanna play a certain, the note that you would normally be just picking by itself, you, you, um, you, you basically block every other string from making a sound if you just want one string to sound through and you just get in the habit of, of muting the strings that you don't want to hear rather than not playing them. That's like just barely pressing down on the on the on the strings, you know, to get the real percussive, funky right. sound. That was the original idea with the James Brown stuff. I guess was to make the guitar more like a percussion instrument rather than rather than like a guitar. Um, so it's basically just, just just not holding, just just barely barely pressing down, kind of leave, leave, making it so it just makes more of a percussive noise. So you just don't press down all the way. For me, that, that kind of playing has everything to do with just making sure that your, that your right hand can just be really precise with stuff like that and just be really deep in the groove.
like it, it's kind of like the idea of when you subtract all that space that can go in between two things. Like if you were to just play it like this, as opposed, to, it just it just it just creates this dimension to it because then you've got two you've got a high thing and a low thing and it's basically like two things rather than just playing a chord which makes it just like one thing. So so it was it was a good way to play acoustic guitar and to be able to kind of improvise with myself because I could kind of send my head in two directions at once, you know? Like an example of like improvising with that kind of thing, what you can get into like... So you can just sit there and have fun with yourself, kind of be the bass player and the guitar player at once, you know. Well, it's, you know, it's, you can't forget that it's all about playing music. It's not about what you can show people that you can do with a piece of wood in your hands that had strings on it. Like the the idea is to make sounds that are good, and in music, that's really so much about the relationships between the different things. So, like for me. Like if I'm sitting at home studying a particular guitar solo, it's not enough for me to just learn the solo. I have to make sure I understand the relationship between the notes that, 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 the, that the lead player is playing and the chords that are being played behind it or the bass line that's being played behind it. And, and I think that the fact that I, that I take that approach to it is, comes out a lot in my soloing because I'm, I'm often really absorbed in what the bass and the drums are, are doing. And, and, uh, and I'm really thinking about trying to create dimension and relationship to that. You know, I'm not, I'm not thinking in terms of, of just, oh good, they're giving me a blank canvas, now I can go crazy over it. Like it's, it's, it's more like constant interaction with, with, the, with the other people playing. And you know, it's, um, and, and I guess on this album, like it was really important to me to, to have a lot of, to do a lot of speeding up and slowing down. And a lot of people play, uh, a lot of people play sort of s straight up and down and there's, there's like an invisible, like if a song's tempo is like this, there's like a, a 16th note grid that's invisible that and usually like in general people play with a strict adherence to that even if they're people who don't know anything about music, sometimes especially if they're people who don't know anything about the technical side of music they stick to that thing like like they're in jail, you know. They don't they they don't go outside of it. They don't play slower than that. They don't play faster than that. They don't speed up and slow down. They 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 play a series of notes, all of which more or less fall into that uh, onto one of those sixteenth notes. They could be playing slow, but it's dun 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 you know. So yeah, so the, the idea for me, like with, with a lot of the playing that I did on this album was to really like, really go outside of that and to, and to not pay any attention to that at all. And, and even, even when I am playing things that are on time as far as being 16th notes, I'll try to lay back on them or try to push forward on them. Just, and, and if I'm doubling a guitar, I don't try to double it exactly. I, I like to have, like, like on that thing on, on Danny California where, where it's going. Uh, if you listen, the, the one on the right is playing, one, I think it's, one of them's playing right on time and the, and the other one is playing a laid back version of it and they create a cool stereo effect like that. I just, I just didn't want to be straight in any way. So, so for me, like, like my playing, I, Chad and Flea did a lot of like experimentation with me in the studio, just sort of playing in a, in a style where the guitar is more, talking over the music and it's finding a groove in, it's finding its own groove in the music other than what the bass and the drums are laying down, you know?
Like, like making it, making sure you're just stretching time out and 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 make you know making time go faster, making time go slower, just playing games with it all the time and just trying to like twist everything around and you know make just try to bend the fabric of reality because it's a lot you know it's 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 a lot easier to do with a guitar for me than it is with talking to somebody or you know.